Former South African all-rounder Lance Klusner is uh, coaching in the United Arab Emirates. The build-up to the tournament was far from perfect after Afghanistan was taken over by the Taliban. Afghanistan were considered by many to be the whipping boys of the tournament, but they have performed exceptionally well and will qualify for the semi-finals with a victory over New Zealand on Sunday. Uh, we are now joined by Klusner to chat about the remarkable performance of the Afghanistan side. Lance, a very good morning to you. Thanks so much for agreeing to speak to us. So, Afghanistan, a cricketing success by all means right now as we speak. Two wins in the T20 World Cup so far against Scotland and Namibia, also taking Pakistan to the brink. What do you attribute all of this to? I mean, obviously you've been spearheading the coaching, but any other factors that you're thinking of? Um, I think, first of all, good morning to everybody. Um, a lot of factors, actually. Um, I think boys are, are pretty uh, comfortable dealing with a lot of adversity. You know, we don't play home games. Every game's an away game, whether it's in India or somewhere in the UAE. Um, so, so that's something. And you know, in these days of COVID, is organising those uh, those bubbles um, outside of your country, and it's all challenges. So, um, you know. Sure, it's been a little bit more challenging in the last two months, but uh, boys are comfortable with that. Um, it is what it is. And, um, you know, we focus a lot on just dealing with uh, what we have in front of us rather than um, mm. trying to worry too much about our future or, you know, what's happening at home. And just focusing really on putting a smile on the faces of, you know, our 36 million supporters back home in, in Afghanistan that uh, maybe just for those three hours or three and a half hours, uh, we can help them, you know, just escape and uh, maybe enjoy some cricket. OK, so we'll talk about that in just a moment, what they contend with. But I I'm looking at what we're talking about, Group 2, um, Afghanistan, uh, their encounter with New Zealand, looking at New Zealand's run rate. How confident are you uh, that that's going to go well? Uh, look, we can beat any team, any team on any given day with got the best spin bowling attack in the world. So, you know, our challenge is always if we can score enough runs um, and then give the opportunity to, you know, our spinners to to just do what they do. So, yes, we're confident. We're looking forward to the game. Uh, I think, you know, if we get through that game with a, with a positive result, we're still going to be possibly a little bit under pressure from, from India, who will probably finish on the same amount of points. However, they'll, I'm sure they'll have a, a superior run rate to us. So it is a bit complicating, complicated, but uh, we're looking forward to tomorrow and hopefully, you know, again, as I said, just put a smile on the face of faces of people back home. Mm, and uh, the warm-up win over the West Indies and the series wins over Zimbabwe and Ireland, what is the secret to Afghanistan um, their performance and how much further can they go? I mean, you're talking about India. They didn't have the best possible start against Pakistan, but they've done rather uh, well to pick up after that. Uh, but just share with us uh, what are the advantages that Afghanistan have at the moment and how they've showcased that? Yeah, look, I mean, there's, I haven't worked with a team and I, I think there's very few teams out there that, that work harder, have a, you know, as much passion as as these guys do and you know practice and you know motivating uh the guys is, is is extremely easy so i mean that just helps a lot you know we we kind of look forward to every game and um making sure that uh you know we, we're just doing what we can in practice and then against the big teams we you know we just have a little motto that uh, we're always going to ask them to bring their a game you know if they have a wobble on a on a certain day then we want to be in a position, I guess, to put them under pressure, possibly like we did with Pakistan, you know, mm -hmm. a huge, huge team uh, that we ran right down to the wire. So uh, we're hoping to do the same with New Zealand as well. And, and how many runs do you think will be needed? About 10? Um, oh, it's so difficult to say, you know, we've got to remember that India have got to play um, uh, Namibia in their last game, which, um, you know, they've got a great opportunity to uh, do well there. So we, we, we're really just looking to try and get over the line um, against New Zealand. And if the numbers count against us, then um, there's not really too much we can do. Mm. I, I mean, you are talking about the team itself, how hard they're fighting. Are you saying they want to stay on the pitch and not think too much about what's going on back home? But 
just share with us, does the present political climate affect the trajectory of the team at all? And are you able to talk to us about the hardships that the players face? Um, look, I, th I think at the moment, um, uh, you know, Taliban have been extremely uh, supportive of the team. Um, you know, have have met with have met with with the team, and you know, wish them all the best for you know the World Cup. Um, so, I mean, their support has been absolutely unwavering, and and I think that's been a, a exceptionally good for us to have that. Um, I, I can't speak about the future. I'm not sure what's going to happen there. I mean, there's a lot of um, I guess uh, there's a lot of considerations to take into play take. Uh, uh, to bear in mind, I guess, going forward. But, um, you know, we're just dealing with what's on our plate and we've got a big game uh, tomorrow. Uh, we've, we're scheduled to tour Zimbabwe in uh, December, Jan as well. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Um, but, uh, yeah, we just uh, really, it's just a matter of taking things day by day. And, um, you know, we're extremely lucky in that we've got some extremely talented players as well uh, who play uh, in, in leagues around the world, they play in the IPL, uh, they play in the Big Bash in Australia. We've got players that, that are playing in England as well. So uh, that's good for us. Um, mm -hmm. Our concerns are maybe just trying to get a little bit more cricket for uh, the boys who, who aren't at the moment good enough to be playing in those leagues. So mm -hmm. um, that's a concern of ours. But, um, yeah, just dealing with, with what's on the plate at the moment. And you know, hopefully we can look forward to a tour to, to uh, Zimbabwe. Um, end of December, Jan. Okay, so what you're saying is that uh, you are getting support, and, and should there be something worth celebrating, the team will be able to do that? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, as I said, Taliban have been extremely um, supportive, um, you know, of, of of our campaign so far at the World Cup, and, and uh, that's, been, that's been great. Um, and then we'll deal... And it's not just now, you know, we, that's just been the story of since I've been with Afghanistan is that we just uh, we've had COVID in there as well. So, yeah, whatever comes up, we deal with that and, and play our best. Um, and as I said, uh, for them, organization is extremely difficult as well because uh, we haven't played. We've never played a home game. So it's always in India or somewhere else. So mm. uh, lots of challenges. But uh, I think my message really is to. It is that what what the boys have achieved with so much adversity and so little resources compared to other big teams out there um, often goes unnoticed, and mm. um, that's just a message I guess that you know I'd leave I'd like to leave with you and and, and everyone else is that uh, so know, what these guys have achieved. Um, is amazing. Let me latch on to that. And I, I want to, from what you've just said, are those the takeaways that you are, that you have from coaching Afghanistan and what you hope to transfer possibly in coaching here in South Africa or elsewhere? Um, yes, it's, it's obviously, it's, it's for me, number one is their passion. Um, you know, we've got guys that played around the world but come back and, and, and play for Afghanistan with... Um, so much passion and pride. So, so that's number one. And then, really, just for me to to get the message out there or, or the that knowledge, really, is that what these guys are achieving is absolutely incredible for the adversity, for um, you know, um, and the resources we have available. How much cricket we play back home, first class cricket, uh, uh, and. Um, I guess 50 over cricket T20 competitions like we are, you know, I guess accustomed to knowing back home in South Africa or around the world um, are a fraction of, of, of actually, you know, in, in terms of comparison. So what these guys are, are achieving is absolutely phenomenal. And, and that really is a message just to get out there is that um, even if you don't have a lot, um, you can you can still achieve you know, right. comparisonly so much, so much more. A huge lesson for me. So final question. I know there's still a, a mountain or a few hills to climb. What happens next for you after the World Cup? Uh, me personally, um, a couple of options. Obviously, um, I'm finishing with Afghanistan end of December. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see if, if they're inter interested in having me back. Um, if not, there are a couple of options that... Uh, 
but uh, nothing nailed down at the moment. So, um, yeah, really just trying to get through tomorrow. And then um, I think the next thing for me is is the T10 competition uh, in, in Abu Dhabi, uh, which I'll remain behind. And a couple of my players will be doing the same. So we'll be taking part in there. Um, and then uh, we'll, we'll just see what the, what the new year brings. Thank you. All right, thank you so much uh, for chatting to us and do come back and tell us all about it. Uh, former uh, South African all-rounder Lance Kluzner, who is currently uh, coaching uh, the Afghanistan team for the T20. He's coaching in the United Arab Emirates.